Hello and welcome to another ITT. Tonight, we have a very special guest with us, and his name is Sean Keller. Hello, Sean Keller. Hello, everyone. It's nice to see you. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm joined with uh, also some supporting guests here. We have Art Horse. Uh, hi, I, I, I'm Art Horse. <laughs> this is really pretty. We have Anon the Anon. Hey, I animate stuff and I do it weird. <laughs> yeah, you need to get the spaghetti out of your PC, man. Oh yeah, I'm a child in two. That's 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 the that's the key element. Yes, um, we, all the way from like that little part next to Spain, we have Alumix. What do you mean, little part of the Spain? It's it's the <laughs> glorious country. We have the entire world. <laughs> oh yeah, um, he, Alumix is joined by someone in the background. So ignore the the crazy ramblings. Um, so if you hear any of that. To some crazy ramblings going on. And lastly, but not least, we have our um, amazing support role guy over here, Corpulent Brony. Hey. All right, all right, all right, all right. We're going to get right into it. And the fight begins. And the fight <laughs> begins. So, first off, <laughs> what, I, this is a question that a lot of people are asking, and we would like for you to reiterate. Re- what got you into just animating some of these like pony characters that we've all like come to love now? Athena and and the other. Um, oh my gosh, what's Luster. her name? Is Luster. There you go. Yeah. What got you to do that? Well, it was I was I was running up ideas to do on my uh, YouTube channel. Like the uh, YouTube channel I got. Like I have it non monetized, but I'm probably gonna have to change it now because it's getting kind of popular. I kept it really kind of undercover because the whole channel was designed just for uh, friends at the studios, like some directors and producers, and they'll have like a good chuckle over the uh, stuff I do. That's why a a lot of the stuff there is kind of like, this isn't quite for kids. It's like, what is this? What is this designed for? But it's it's like like it's all these in gags and and uh, this whatnot. So I so I play this thing like the pot smoking drunken ghost hunter, which I really I. I noticed that a couple of the guys I put on my YouTube channel as suggested channels, like um, um, Urban Ghosts and Urban Exploration, they're, they're these like Christian guys that go out uh, looking for ghosts. But I started noticing that they started doing drunken episodes. I'm thinking, oh, am I actually influencing them? But uh, but when I did the Athena cartoon, the whole concept was like. My drunken character goes to a innocent cartoon world, and it, it could have been anything from like Care Bears to to, to just about anything. And then I thought, like, well, just the My Little Pony world. Like, I don't think I'll get in trouble because I remember a lot of the Bronies way back then did, did a lot of like fan films, and so I don't think I'll get in trouble because like I, I always got to be kind of careful. Like, like I can put Muttley in a cartoon or Peabody because like I, I know all the guys at studios, and they say, well, if you do it one time. That's that passes a parody, and hang it. And all that, so I thought, well, let's do the pony world. But I'm going to keep it I, since I don't. I, even though I worked with the studio on the Tom and uh, Jerry show here, and the uh, Canadian studio that that was do, doing the animation was uh, was one of the studios up there that did the pony show. That's where I was doing some assistant directing work on the Tom and Jerry show, and I will be talking to them all, all the time. And I found out, oh, oh, you guys did that show, like. How do you guys do like the Celestia main and all that like or and there's there was there's something about um Chrysalis's uh main and and so then they sh- sh- showed me how that was done so like so I'm kind of familiar with them, but didn't quite know if I could do this so like so when I did the the one with the theme, I, I I was very careful not to mention cant a lot don't mention Celestia just say it's like a brand new land and and it's on the opposite end of the world from the main pony towns and all that. So, so the concept was to go in, swindle some some innocent character to come back to this world and just send them on like some stupid ghost hunt. Um, so, so, uh, so I, 
so to make the gag work, I had to make Athena as authentic, as innocent, naive, and pure, just as a character from the show, like 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 no no sarcasm. Um, and the villain had to be a little more lighthearted, but like a villain f- f- from that show. Uh, but kind of like I, I sprinkle in just a little bit of that Scooby Doo stuff, like uh, like, and I would have gotten away with it if it wasn't for you and that, that pesky dog and and all that. So like. So, so it took me about a month and eight days through that cartoon, and I popped up on YouTube. And usually, the vid- the videos I do will get like maybe a couple hundred views, and then after about a month or two, it'll go up to like maybe a thousand. And when I and when I popped that that cartoon up there, um, a friend of mine said by the end of the day, "Hey, there's something happening in the cartoon. It's got like about a thousand or two thousand views." Like what? And and so then I I popped open. And I just saw all these like comments, like, oh my gosh! And then and then by by the Sunday, it was like like five thousand views. And so that's when I did that like like short little bit where uh, had like three scenes of Athena. I did did that in like uh, this one day. It, it's really easy if you do animation. If she if a character is standing there and all you're doing like it's just like basically uh, head turns. Then it kept on going up. And so that's when I did that other one, the uh, 60 frames a second. That that whole cartoon was, was kind of a shtick because in animation, in traditional animation, you would never, ever think about doing anything on 60 frames a second because even on twos, that's 30 drawings per second. That's a complete waste of, of your time and uh, resources. And, and I'll never do that one again because all, all the computer programs from Flash to Premiere to After Effects, they were screaming over it. Like, if I couldn't see anything play back in real time i did like window to scene like okay th- that looks good and then i just kind of like clumped it all together so so this big cartoon with athena is gonna be 24 frames a second i'm not gonna do that 60 frames thing again because it didn't really pay off all that much except for just it made don Hahn, the producer of the uh this lion king have a giggle over that one that that it was shot at 60 frames per second but yeah so so the Athena cartoon was just meant to be like a this one time gag of going to a innocent cartoon, swindling some innocent cartoon to come here to go on some kind of a ghost hunt. Hmm. That's actually pretty cool. Like I, I like that. They're they're it's like what you said, like others have done it before, but the animation is so smooth compared to like other individuals. There's only one other person that c- comes from the top of my head. He goes by um, Storm XF3. Um, not sure if you've seen his work before, but uh, we'll, we'll we'll probably dive into it as as we go on to the um, to the interview because we have some videos like ready for you to just you know your reaction and we'll talk about them and such. But that's just something that I noticed um, watching the video for the first time, like a couple of days after it premiered. Um, sure enough, I'm pretty sure many have told you uh, it popped up on 4chan. It popped up on the slash MLP board and it everyone fell in love with it. There were multiple threads within the first couple of hours that were reaching um, bump limit and just they couldn't get enough of your character. And there was even art being made within like the first couple hours, too. So it just shows how like, you know, amazing this work, you know, really, you know, touched the fandom in a sense. But um, well, like I. Yeah. Like I'm really flattered and just kind of shocked because, like, because like uh, the only bronies I know are in from Second Life, and mm-hmm. and back in the heyday when uh, the Cantalat wedding episode had came out, if if you pull up the map and, and you're and you're to, to, to uh, just look at the Pony Sims, all of them were filled up. They were filled up the max like about eighty people. And but for the last few years, it's been really kind of small. Like you'll see like maybe two or three people on a map. But on Friday night, you'll see on one map. I forgot the name of the town. It's right above Trotsdale. You'll you'll see like a grouping of uh, 20 because they're having like uh, some kind of like a, a Friday night party there. So I thought, well, I, I guess the, the Brony uh, fandom had died off. And so like I thought when this goes up, it's like, well, he's kind of late in the party. And then when I saw that. Oh my gosh! There's still a lot of bronies about it. I I had no idea. But Wait, it, uh, have you followed the show back in the day? I well up to when the Hub Network uh, was uh, and 
like the uh, the service provider had the hub network up to the Cantalot winding, and then they uh, dropped it. So, so, so after that, I've only seen like a like a smattering, like here or there on uh, YouTube. Um, you didn't like miss much. Yeah. yeah. Well, like 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 this is one episode I saw on someone's YouTube channel called. Uh, oh, I'm trying, I'm trying to remember. He he does all these like videos where he tries to like, where did Chrysalis come from? Who is she? Um, sawtooth, and he played this one bit where this one episode where all these villains were in stone. Discord turns into this ox or or goat, breaks them out, but then they suck his powers out. And there's a little kid in there. I'm thinking, who? What? Wait a minute, what's going on? Then Twilight's an adult. At the very last, like, okay, I miss a lot. Well, what is going on? And so, so at some point, I gotta watch it. I know who are these people? What's going on? Why, why were they in stone? Now they're back in stone. And what was with the goat? And don't worry. Everybody else felt the exact same way. (laughs) (laughs) Because like, like, like I'm told that it like at the very last episode, twice normal. And then Gilligan white. And now she's an adult. And then the show ends like, what what, what happened to Luna and, uh, and, uh, 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 Celestia. Yes. <laughs> the white horse. It's okay. The white horse. The big yeah, one. Like, like her. <laughs> like, like I, I like those two, and they're gone. And as now it's Twilight and adult. Like, I'm feeling kind of gypped over this. Oh, yeah. Don't worry, you weren't the only one. I, I was Everybody rooting was. like nine years for for like more focus on background characters, and we had like two episodes. And I couldn't, I couldn't ask for more. I mean, in ten years, two episodes, I'm good because we could have nothing. But uh, well, yeah, maybe. Well, like, like I'm hoping everyone's gonna like this one episode I'm doing. It, it's gonna explain. Like, I, I think of this whole lore because, like, I just had this passing line. Like, she, she's the guardian of three kingdoms, and everyone's dying. Like, what are the three kings like? Oh, now, now I got to invent a lore for for these like nonsense lines. So, like, I think I came up with something that is like really neat and. Mm-hmm. Like, if you want to see the the newest uh, scenes on the that whole film, I, I can pull them up and uh, uh, show you where Athena does this really solemn the speech of like her the land that she guards, explains why she has magic, what her true age is, and, and all this kind of stuff. I made it very Lord of the Rings, like like this constant ten thousand year conflict between all these different uh, warring factions, and it's it's up to these. Uh, uh, Pegasus have been gifted with uh, his magic and eternal life to be able to help keep the peace, but we never see who the inhabitants of the kingdoms are, except we know that Lustrous comes from the land of the undead. Uh, I, I, I've gotten a lot of people upset at uh, at uh, Lustrous life because, like, I wanted to use Chrysalis in, in her actual uh, modeling. Like, I was about to use, like, uh, I'm probably gonna get in trouble. I'm probably gonna get in trouble if I use the actual model, but it's like I was so close to using like, well, let, let me make like a cheap uh, knockoff. So in a day and a half, I just did like a very cheap version where I had to make it so that you understood like, ah, uh, I get it. That's supposed to be this uh, uh, chrysalis. And so I had to do up the minions for this new episode. They have to look like the changelings, but they're not really the changelings. And I'm just calling them the weirdlings for right now, tentatively, unless I can think of that. And then, and then I, I do the pony guards for um, uh, uh, Athena's realm. And so, since I can't draw anything on model, I'm looking right at shining armor, and I'm drawing him because my inability to draw anything on model, like, oh, it's a brand new pony horse character. Okay, well, there we go. It's like I'm looking right at him, and I'm trying to draw him, and it looks completely different. <laughs> So you, you you didn't have to redesign a lot because you already came out differently enough. Yeah, it's like so. So my inability to draw anything on a model that it doesn't fall in line with with what I was taught as a kid, like like straights and as uh, the strengths against curves and all that. So like a character like Mickey Mouse is absolute death uh, for me to try to draw. It's like ah, oh, this is the hardest character. It's, it's rounds, but it's not really rounds. A little off. It's like so there's kind of ovalish, but so round characters are really hard for me to to wrap wrap my head around. But t- touching on on drawing topic, like for ho- how long? When did you start drawing in general? Was it like something from your childhood that you were into, or 
Yeah. I, I, when I was a kid, I, I had a very sad childhood. I didn't have a whole lot of friends. My only friends were cartoon characters that I saw on, on, on TV. So, <laughs> so in the 60s, I was watching like Kim of the White Lion, The Amazing Three, Speed Racer, and all that. And then by the time I got to the 70s, when I started like being able to like really draw, I was trying to draw like Secret Squirrel, then Robin Hood hit. And so I'm, so I'm trying to draw that. That's I didn't understand why they were drawing the scratchy lines, but I'm trying to trying to emulate that that, that same kind of that that scratchy uh, line thing. Then when I got hired at Disney by an absolute fluke, uh, it was on Fox and Hound, and my instructor, when the old timer said, "We want you to go into the animation uh, archive, get all the milk call scenes from Robin Hood, and and study those." Like you, you're going to pay me to draw what I've been drawing from like high school. Okay. And so since, since I got in the department, I'm not really, really a artist. If you put me in a life drawing class, I, I am completely lost. So like, it's like, I'm just drawing shapes. Like I just know how to put shapes together. And I'm just, and so, so I'm trying to like, Oh, here's the guy that did that scratchy line. I've been trying to draw all my life. So I just been, so it's now part of my, my whole build. Like for me to draw like a nice smooth line is nearly impossible. Um, so to this day, since my neurons just remember how to draw those, uh, scratchy lines and stuff for me to draw something around and there's that war in your neurons, like this is not, uh, making us happy, put some straights and curves in it. So like, I'm trying to draw the rounds, but then I tend to put the straights and the curves in, in there and stuff. So that's why Athena looks like a cross between my little pony, Disney and Hanna Barbera. It's like... <laughs> Trying to draw My Little Pony, but I can't quite get there, and, and so I'm telling people that uh, that draw the ponies. Well, like, well, well, you, you could probably draw Athena better than uh, I can. Like, it, like, just put that 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 MLP is line quality and all those nice uh, curve lines, and you could do a far better job than than this what I'm doing because the Athena model was done like in a day and a half. Where you got to draw all the as mouth shapes, like thirty shapes in the front view, thirty shapes in the three quarter and side and back. It's like hundreds of drawings, and so like I just have to draw as fast as, as I possibly can, and so I'm just drawing in kind of a style that I am kind of uh, uh, comfortable with. And lustrous, I feel like I should go back and fix it. Like she was drawing even more hastily in her eyes and all that, maybe shrink the eyes down or something. But but uh, yeah, oh. so. So, so you've got one up on me on drawing the the pony characters because, like, it's something I can't <laughs> physically do. Like, like, it, like, I'm looking at the picture of Twilight, I would be lucky if I could get something that even looked close to her because, like, she's like a perfect round head and a nice round uh, muzzle. For me, I would like struggle. I'd try to draw like a straight and a curve, and and it wouldn't look right. And, the hair I could probably do because, like, that's a curve against like a straight and all that. But the head would be really hard for me to mm, to be able to draw that. Yeah. And I think a were... lot of people have that problem. Like for me, I'll I'll try to slip in some actual horse anatomy to give it a little more definition because just the like the amorphous bean blob, it it, it kind of messes with me too. Yeah. Oh, and if you were curious about how I animate, I can actually bring the scene, or or I can do like a head turn, like from 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 one angle to the next, and show you really quickly how I animate and how I put the timing sense that I do from Disney and uh, Warner Brothers in and stuff. It took a, a few years to learn how to use Flash and then to pop my timing, and now I can do timing that's like really super snappy and poppy and, and all that. You do it really fast. And and uh, part of the to making it look smooth is um, I was talking about in one tutorial. They were talking to me, uh, asking me about on the head turns that I'm doing that the front view is like the three quarter, which is like the side view. And I said, yeah, that was kind of the problem. I understood what the designers were going for. It was like a kind of a Chuck Jonesian thing where every view is like slightly different. And I said, but with Athena, like no matter what head angle that she, she, she's at, it's like like a solid head. So that, so when she turns her head, it's m much more uh, smoother. And then with the hair flow and the ears and all that, it helps to like to turn the, to turn the head about. 
Mm. And if you want, I can show you how all I do all that stuff, and you can animate the same zippy type stuff. But if you guys are animators and doing the pony stuff, you probably have a lot of stuff that I don't know how to do because, like, I'm a novice as a novice when it comes to Flash. Oh, I, I, I mean, actually, I, 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 I don't. Anybody here uses Flash actually? Because I think we all got a bunch of different backgrounds. Photoshop. <laughs> so yeah, Photoshop is for animation. Okay, yeah, yeah. like, <laughs> you know, like, like, it, it, eventually I want to go to Toon Boom, but Toon Boom's like two thousand bucks. I was like, and I'm, and it's hard to find tutorials on it, but I finally found enough stuff to do the cheap, quickie puppet animation that I do in Flash, because like, like, I don't need the node window. I don't do rigging. I, all the parts are loose, where you can pull the arms off and all that. The only thing that's rigged is just the head with, with all the uh, small shapes and the in the uh, eyelids and and all that and now that i found my last piece of information which i couldn't find any tutorial about about how to construct the head and this one tutorial per person who gave a great tutorial he took a drawing it's a long tutorial but then he got to the eye part and he said now put all your eyes on one layer okay what? and uh, and and he said that because like there's a problem there that when you do that one layer like in flash you got a rotation point. So how do you put the rotation point on old pupils? And that's where he said you have to go node when put a node instead of a node instead of a node. Like, that's going to make my head explode. Like, how do you just do this simply like in a flash? And so I was wrestling on that for six months, like, I, I, there's got to be a simple way to do this. And then one night when I was in the bathtub having a margarita and some cannabis, cannabis, <laughs> It, it kind of it, it fired off my n- neurons thinking, oh, he's wrong. Just just do it like in Flash. Just put all the pupils on different layers, and they all have the rotation points. Blam! Now I can do it! <laughs> <laughs> the epiphany moment. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, the cannabis woke up those brain cells thinking, it, it, this doesn't make sense. Put everything on one layer, but what happens when you're you're going from this view to this view, and now you have to change the the depth because in, in Tomb Boom you can actually nudge things forward and nudge them back in these is it Z or X axis or but you can nudge them, but like be a pain in the butt. That means for every time you, you bring a different head out, you're gonna nudge things around. So it didn't make any sense what he was talking about. And then all of a sudden, like Don, like oh, just keep like in the flash, you keep everything on separate levels, and you can do it. Blam! I can now do it. I think. <laughs> so, so after this last ep- episode with Athena, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna try to transfer Athena's uh, all the symbols into Tomb Boom. Which, when we did the Space Jam two, we had to use Tomb Boom to do the traditional stuff. And Tomb Boom is great if you just do traditional animation because you could do stuff like you do all your in between. But say you want to change drawing three and drawing seven and Flash, you'd have to like drag them up on another level and put them together and use your onion skin. But in Toon Boom, you can select those drawings and call them keys, then have your onion skin only view keys. So now, in your timeline, you can just change those drawings without seeing the other ones, and then you tell them go back to being in-betweens. And then it, it works uh, fine. That's useful. Yeah, it's like a super uh, useful thing. I wish Flash could do that like flash is trying to do catch up to what tomb boom is doing but now blender is now able to do puppet animation oh. so i'm like oh blender can Ooh. do that. No so like talking. yeah and like i'm looking at that and it's like and what they're doing now with puppet stuff if people are figuring out how to do it so blender at some point is going to make it so you can automatically do it but what i'm seeing right now it looks just like tomb boom looks like flash you can do in fact people are re-emulating characters from Cartoon Network and they're animating them and it looks just like what you see in Cartoon Network now. It's like, ooh, and Blender's free. That's yeah, wild. Blender is the new hot potato Blend- right now. Blender gang here. Everybody. <laughs> Actually, it like would it. be nice to uh, maybe for you to do some tutorials at some times and upload them to your channel on how to do this stuff. That would be kind of interesting to see. Yeah, because like if what I'm doing in Flash, you can do in Toon Boom and just about any program that, that uses the puppet style of animation. It's got the layers. The only thing weird about Toon Boom that it took me a long time to wrap my head around that 
the library is the layer that you're drawing on. So say you want to draw all your mouse you put them all in that layer. Now you blow away all those drawings except the first one. And the first one, then you can cycle through all of it. Um, that kind of fouled me, me up in the head a little bit because like there are times, say if your character's like this, blah, 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 this arm is on top of the torso. Now we do a swing around. So does that mean we have to take this arm and put it on a different layer but will that bring the library up there and it's like but then with if that was explained with the z access thing it's like ah oh, I'm, I'm starting to wrap my head around it now so so you can access stuff in the library window but when you create anything on that layer it's only that layer so i don't know if you can take that arm i have to do some experiments and, and if you make a copy put in a in another layer, will it copy the entire library? Like, uh, so it, you you only animate the z-axis, like to put in front or behind. Yeah. So, so like if you're doing like flat, uh, like the uh, My Little Pony puppet style animation, um, so like that's what that one guy was trying to say. And it's one thing where you have to put a no, 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 no in the pupil. So when the head turns around. You push one eye forward or backward on, on the Z then at that point. Wait, we're talking about multiplane camera stuff kind of, right? Yeah. Stuff like that. Oh, all right. Oh. Yeah. And so, like, and that's what Blender does automatically is it Blender's a 3D program. Um, and I think, I think Toon Boom is starting to fear Blender because every now and then I, I get a spokesperson from Toon Boom because I, I, I used it on the uh, Space Jam film and there was. Would you like to purchase your own copy? Like, oh, I'm thinking about it. Um, and then I just mentioned, I'm like, I'm also looking at Blender too. And I was like, <laughs> I got this really terrific response. Oh no, you don't want to go there. <laughs> and They're, like, afraid. Also. They're afraid. They're <laughs> afraid. Dude, I've been advocating for Blender for like, like for four years or something, and I I knew like it had a ton of potential and like. Lately, after the new update 2.8, when the EV, like the real-time renderer, got added and interface got upgraded for a lot of users, like there's a ton of new users, like people that never used 3D before, they started using Blender just because of the animation or just you, you can render things in real time, like it's easy. So like it's it's really nice to hear like adoption from like even animation industry and every everyone is like having that program in the sides because now it's like a, a real a real threat to others well yeah. well that and a lot of studios are now starting to use blender like uh uh ready player one half of it was done in blender the studios are getting tired of spending these exorbitant rental fees and so people are just taking blender and they're putting their own is that called a gooey or their own uh stuff in it. and they're starting to use it for hollywood films now because they're tired of this ex overly expensive stuff. So Blender is probably going to take over. And I just saw the newest Blender is like, oh, I have to get that. That looks like fun. I just don't have time to learn it yet. So when are you joining the, the Blender workflow? Well, I, I've already used Blender for Second Life to build uh, avatars. Like that's what I used to make my uh, Cadence and Athena uh, avatars and a, and a whole bunch of them. But that was on the older Blender. Now this is brand new. It's like, Damn it! They changed the buttons. Now I gotta relearn. It. <laughs> yeah, the late, the two point eight update was like very big. So if you got used to before, like, but uh, at, uh, it will be stable for now. Yeah, it's, it's like yeah. So, so like, in fact, did I download it yet? Um, but it's probably on my other computer. I have, I have two computers. They're both like this is kind of the work machine, but they're both like this is a the thirty nine hundred X Ryzen. The other one is a Ten, ten hundred k IBM. So they're so they're like the, the same power. Uh, like some things work better on one computer than the other. Like for for Star Citizen, since it, they started like ten years ago, they made it more optimized for for Intel. So if you want to play that a little bit better, because it's such a crashy game, that that's what makes it makes it kind of fun. That you have no idea when when everyone says, "Oh gosh." 30k is coming. What whatever you do, just get to a base like, no, I'm trying to deliver a hundred thousand dollars of ore. I'm like, also 30k, 
And then that guy just lost everything he had. Walk, 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 walk. It's like it's like playing a game where you're being the gazelle, and you're you have to watch out for the lions. Well, because it's an alpha game, the lions are the least thing you got to worry about. It's just the it's the god of uh, the uh, the uh, the princess pony physics could get drunk that one night and stepping <laughs> on a hunk of dirt could cause you to slip, fall, break your leg, or kill you, or the whole world is a pool, and you got startled. <laughs> oh man, it's like it's like ultra realistic. Yeah, I love it. Like I, I just go there and I float in a spaceship. I just have my margarita and I just read the chat and be like, "Damn it, this is not is working out." I just blew my ship up when I stepped on. I'm thinking, oh, 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 "Welcome, welcome to Star Citizen." <laughs> like if, if you uh, want to come into Star Citizen, I, I got I got some big ships. I mean, to sit there, I got one ship that has a, a bar and a jacuzzi on it, and just sit there and just kind of float. And just read the chat and just laugh your butt off. Or if there's like one place called uh, Port o- Olison or Orison. It's kind of like the crossroads in uh, World of the uh, Warcraft. Like there's PvP nonsense. Like why did you blow me up, you son of a bitch? And, and if you go, if you just go there, you're like a passive observer. Like you'll watch shit hands, and all of a sudden the station will blow up, or the world will blow up because it's an alpha game, and it's, it's a grand old time. No, we just um, need to wait until Starship Citizen and Second Life join it. So, so what kind of animation stuff would you like to talk about? Anything um, hmm. uh, technique-wise, or uh, um, there? I mean, for I, for one, am a peasant when it comes to animation. All I know is basic drawings and. I was going to try to get into cell animation, but then I realized it was a dying field. So I was like, never mind. Um, I did bring in Anon the Anon and Illumix. They are, in fact, like animators. They do a lot of stuff for the fandom. Um, Art Horse actually also kind of helps. I think, yeah, she helps out Anon the Anon with the with the background drawing. So they, they can take it away if, if they want to. They have a lot more experience compared to, you know, me. All right, and like I, I probably l- learn a lot from from all you guys and gals because, like, like I said, when it comes to Flash, I'm a novice, novice. I know just enough that makes it look like I, I know what I'm doing. When people ask me, "How do you do this?" and when you're like, "Like, oh, I just do it quick, fast, and stupid." Like, but that doesn't answer a question. Like, well, it's quick, fast, and stupid. <laughs> Isn't that how it usually goes, though? Like that that that. I feel like that's everybody's creative process, at least mentally. <laughs> yeah, like, like, uh, like having my scratchy lines and construction lines in the drawings and the fast z- zippy timing hides a multitude of sins. But like, if you want me to, like, there's the one fan animator that that they did that one interview they showed me where someone built their own rigs. They animated it. They put music to it. It looks just like it came from the My Little Pony Studios. That is something I could probably never do because, like, all the lines have to connect smoothly, and the animation, like, oh, that would take me years to do that. But if you like watch one of my scenes, like where the wolf character is doing like a, a, a scramble run, we like come back here, use. If you go frame by frame, you see the legs are broken and busted up. It moves so fast, and the lines are so uh, scratchy. You see the knees don't line up with the lower legs, and <laughs> but it moves so fast, and like. Oh, it, it hides the multitude of sins. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I think you know, who, who you're talking about is Gen Animations. I think they they used to make really uh, convincing pony animations that looked like it came from the from the Hasbro. And yeah, in they, fact, they got they, cease and desisted. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was too yeah. good. <laughs> yeah, they got in trouble for being too good. Hasbro <laughs> got scared because they were actually better than Hasbro at times. Uh, I, th- I think he got hired for them, which is like pretty, pretty cool way to to get he into. Did? Huh. Wait, did he? I, I mean, I assume so. I don't <laughs> think he did, but uh, well, <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm not sure is that exactly how it went. Oh man, the um, I think the other video you were referring to was the lullaby for a princess, because that one was oh the minty. Oh yeah, yeah. that's a minty. I, that took like years to animate. And I think it was only like one guy most of oh. the time. 
So like it was, I bet it was just dealing with a Leviathan when you're like doing something like that. Because I, I know that at least in animation, like something that takes like two to three minutes can probably take you like up to two to three months. <laughs> so, so like if, if that's a video I'm thinking about, I think he was doing like traditional animation, like doing every single drawing. So it's a general rule for every drawing you do, it takes about as long to color it. And then he was putting tone maps in the drawings. Like how how many people? And then I was told it was one person. Like this must took years. And I'm like, oh yeah, it took him like about a year to like. Mom, like the tone mats are alone are a pain in the butt. Like all the shadows and the lighting, like I still don't quite understand how to do a tone mat. Well, I was explain it like, <laughs> like okay, so so you draw your shadow line, and you blur that. Well, how do you keep it crisp and nice and solid on the on on the jaw line? And they said, oh well, you have to use the jaw itself as a mask. Like, mood. Wait a minute, each drawing individual. You have to make a mask for each. Oh my. Gosh, that must have took a long time. Like, yeah. Like, oh, sorry. Go oh, ahead. Yeah. That's what I popped yet. I was gonna say, but like, like the way I do, like uh, when she's walking around in live action, that that's all After Effects stuff. Like, if you want to know how to do that, it's a simple thing. You just go to uh, Light Sweep, and and you drop like a little thing, and, and it creates a, a slight source, and then you can increase the the, the light intensity. It's it causes like a rim light on it. And then you can suggest with that, and boom, and you got your light beam. I haven't found a way to do like the ops way, like to use it to, to, to cause a shadow. And if you do the, the shadow on the ground, you, um, in After Effects, you take the level of Athena, you duplicate it, and you invert it, or however you, you want the shadow, and you kind of like skew it to be flat and put it on the ground and color it black and put a translucent, like make it alpha, and then just keep like a soft blur, boom, and you got your shadow. It doesn't work for every angle. But but it's a, like a real fast way to do all the stuff. Cause like doing the films I'm doing just for fun, I don't have the time to sit and draw like a shadow and, and the tone mask. Like I gotta find the fastest, cheapest way to do something. Like I can show people how to put the the lighting in the scenes, how to put like a shadow. Um, and if you want to track your cam your character in a camera move, I I understand, but I can't get that perfect. I, I did that in my earlier films when I found that uh, Adobe After Effects had this thing called track camera. So you have your live action footage and you find two sharp ends, like a picture frame here and a desk here, and it'll track those the entire film. And every now and then it'll lose it, it gets blurry. So you have to like manually take that pin and put it back there. And so it'll remember the calculations. And then you drop in your animation and you copy it. And you knock out the green screen, and behold, your camera and your character is right in that horrible, this messy footage. But I haven't found a way to make it perfect yet. Yeah, it's tracking. I mean, actually, I, I want to ask you something. Uh, like, your work, it consists a lot about, uh, uh, like, real footage and animated, like, and mixing both of these, like, like, like. Uh, who framed Roger Rabbit, almost like that. You, you, got, you got, like, real elements and animated. Yeah, I do. do you, that. Yeah, I want to ask. Do you storyboard? Like, how do you how do you come up with that? Is it like all freestyle? <laughs> yeah, like uh, I I can show you my story. Like the storyboards I do for myself are like real, like like circles with dots or heads. But um, I do the I live action thing. thing because it takes me forever to draw backgrounds. Like this Athena cartoon, I'm trying to make it like a real cartoon, trying to make it a little bit more serious, but still kind of a little bit of a wacky element into it because like that's how it kind of started. But Trying to give Athena's world a little bit more of a like a real thing, like like it's a real series type thing. But like now that I'm having to draw my backgrounds, each scene is taking a long time. So I'm trying to draw master backgrounds because I don't have the time to draw a whole bunch. Like when Athena and the Raptor come in bursting in the, the palace where Lestris is taking over all the uh, minions. It's a simple background, like just lines and circles, but takes me forever because me and in perspective are mortal enemies so it takes me a long time to, to, to get a background done and um so when i'm doing like something live action like when athena was going down to th there's a river wash here and all the footage was going to be live action but i had my my uh, sony camera setting was wrong i was walking down there i filmed where jd was up against the um uh, the um street light and I filmed all that, just waiting for a car to pass because I wanted to have JD like well, honk his horn at a car. But then when I walked down on the dirt road, 
my thumb had flicked the uh, the switch to this one button called Q Q and S or Q and A. And I, I didn't realize that. So as I'm shooting, it's now shooting at 240 frames a second. And the uh, <laughs> and so like, you know, all the footage is like really dark. And so I got back, this is a Sony camera, a low light keep thing. And so like, wait a minute, it's just Q and S. Like, so I typed like, what's Q and S like? Oh, it's a quick and easy way to get to like slow motion. Like, oh, so that's why I had to like draw all the backgrounds because I wanted that that Hanna Barbera like eternal background that's going by. But I thought it'd be funny yeah. in, in the slide action. I took all the footage of that, couldn't use it. It was just way too dark. Oh, I, I, think the I last, didn't even notice that. I thought yeah. it was like normal footage. Yeah. So like like it, as, as soon as the ape just started to chase them, it's all like a hand drawn background, like just silhouettes of trees and all that. And then the uh, so the rest of it was all just hand drawn because all the footage was just. In fact, all the stuff up to it, it was like. I had my my flashlight had all the colors. And I was noticing like, it looks kind of dark. It should be like really vibrant and light. Like a it was a Sony A sixty four hundred with a, a one point four aperture uh, lens. Up. It should have been like beautiful. Instead, it came out kind of grainy and bad. Like the camera break and then what put this Q and A like oh my thumb hit the button so 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 now that I'm drawing the backgrounds uh, which. I can show you all the uh, new stuff that, that 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 I've done. It's slowing me down tremendously. Like I, I may spend like five hours on a, on a background, and the animation goes by in like fifteen minutes. Like, ugh, not very good gas. Oh, <laughs> I wish I wish we we all had your power. Well, like Where animation is faster than drawing. <laughs> well, I, I can show you how I'm doing it, and then it'll it'll make sense to you. Like, um, I'll uh, sometimes teach at the animation colleges out here, and, and some of the college kids have asked me about, we've seen your flash cartoons. Like, ooh, you have? <laughs> how many times have you been stopped on the street? Like, oh, we are fans. Well, like, like, and they ask me, like, do you smoke pot all the time? Like, no, no, no. no. That that it's just a character. It's it's an end gag because people have always accused me of the studios like I mean into psychedelics and pot and all kind of stuff and like and I found cannabis oh, and like, became uh, legal out here. So I bought like I like this stuff. I feel wacky. The only time I got wasted for a film was that thirty minute loan challenge where I was going thirty minutes alone out there looking for ghosts while the head full the head full of pot. Uh, I did way too much. So when I walked out to the, to the, <laughs> the street, I, got, I got lost, and I was down to the <laughs> And so I'm just rambling on. And the funniest thing was, I wish I, I, I kept it. There was a couple out there on the this river wash. They were, they were like just enjoying the night, and I'm talking like, "Oh, there's nothing for better than the ghosts around here. The ghosts are going to turn it off." And they're like, "Holy fuck! Oh my god! I'm call the police!" You're a true artist. You 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 stick to it, <laughs> and so all these kids were asking me about. I'm like, no, no, that's intended for like producers and directors. And now that the YouTube is starting to take off, which I didn't expect, I mean, to like <laughs> restructure it, maybe have to remove all the pot stuff and the the alcohol stuff. And just have I mean, it's a it's a know. good way. It's a good way to to keep your videos uh, like for general audience to stay away from the kid content because the kid content you you cannot you don't get as many views no, no oh. comments oh well yeah like when the the whole copa stuff hit i was like oh my god i'm gonna be sued up to yin because they said you could be sued at forty two thousand dollars per video if a child is attracted to your video whether it's said as yeah. adult or not even if you said words like like it's cool man or any cartoon animal and i'm thinking i'm I don't know what to do. I, 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 I can't <laughs> toast. But then they eased up on them because people said, well, "What about South Park? What about Family Guy?" And so yeah, they I realized remember, it was so, such a silly idea. Yeah. So like, uh, but I was really kind of uh, nervous about that. But I always try to tell all the car on the description. This is not intended for kids. Um, <laughs> so like, oh, I yeah. to, so like after like say something in a video after say. A semi expletive, like within the Thetis cartoon, I can't, I can't have her be around like foul words. I want the the gag is for her to be completely innocent. Uh, like when she drinks the lemonade, she doesn't realize. Well, that was a margarita with three shots of vodka, which only had a half a shot. But and she spits it out so that she wasn't going to have any of that. Um, 
<laughs> but I have to put a little something in there so it's not really kid friendly. But at the same time, I don't know if I'm going to be hit by YouTube. Um, I just got a notification in YouTube saying, like, how come you haven't monetized? And so, like, you're up, you've been up for monetization for like years now. Why don't you do this? And like, uh, because I don't want to get a $42,000 fine for having cartoon characters like Athena <laughs> like being around a pot smoking idiot. <laughs> I, I, th- I think everything, it's all right. <laughs> it's... But on this next one, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to monetize since YouTube is putting ads on my commercials now anyways. Now yeah, like... the policy. So it's like, well, really? if they're going to put ads on, I might as well try. So this next one, there's no mention of pot. There's no mention of alcohol in it. Um, there's no cameos of characters fr- from uh, other studios in it. i got to make sure not to even mention the word can't a lot or, or anything. It's got to be her own world. <laughs> And all that, and her own lore and myth, and all that kind of stuff. So, so then hopefully, Havro gods won't come and smite me with a with a rod. Like <laughs> you work in the animation industry and you're stealing our stuff. Like, well, <laughs> yes and no. <laughs> it's just dark. Um, it's, it's it's your design sense. It's Laura Fawcett design sense filtered through my inability to draw what Laura Foss drew. Oh. Um, <laughs> Taking a bit of a detour here because you've you've mentioned a lot to think about. <laughs> yes, <laughs> you're taking a user. We went from storyboard to animation to process to, yeah. to YouTube. No, it's great. It's actually like I love this kind of conversations. But you mentioned quite a few things that I want to like expand upon here. When you talk about style, right? And you said that you wanted to make your own thing. I think that's an excellent idea. You know, a lot of uh, pitfalls that a lot of at least artists tend to fall into is that they follow these popular like artists and you end up with like 20 clones. So I think it's an awesome idea that like you that you did that, like you're, you're doing your own style in a sense. And you mentioned Disney and, and Hanna-Barbera. But what are um, some other outside sources that you use in order to inspire not just the Athena, but like your other animations as well? Because I mean, I can see it there, but like what else, like even the little known things that maybe people won't know about, but we would like to dig in because, you know, sources are always nice. Well, the other like source I had, like the stuff from Tezuka, like I always loved Kim of the White Lion. Um, so my, my personal White Lion character uh, is an adult and it's a mixture of. Kim is an adult, a little bit of Lion King, a smattering from Hanna-Barbera, uh, and then my own inability to draw any of those things accurately. So it comes out like this brand new character, but enough that people can see, isn't that Kimba as an adult? Like, yep. Um, like, since I'm not really a good character designer, like I said, like, when I got a job in the studio, it was, it was purely accent. Uh, I was playing on going to be a detective in high school and follow follow my hero Columbo and smoke a big stinky cigar and wear a horrible trench coat and harass uh, celebrities with the same annoying question over and, and over again. And then, um, so I got eight pluses in police, sciences, algebra, math, and all that stuff. D minuses in art class. I would have gotten an F, but I did a character of the, the art instructor <laughs> slaying the entire class with a big whip. And that so warmed his heart, his heart grew a fraction of the sight that day, and he gave me a, a D minus. And so, like, I was just drawing cartoon characters, and my friend said, Why don't you try to get a job at Disney? Like, I don't know anything about animation. Like, and I was just graduating high school. Like, so I sent off like five pencil drawings, three of my Fox um, character drawings, and two Cylon warriors from Battlestar Galactica. I said, Blah, blah, blah. I just graduated. You don't like the drawings, you don't have to send them back just to throw them away. And the next week, they they called me up, and they said, we'd like to hire you. And I thought it was a, a joke for my mom's work. I'm like, uh-huh, yeah, right. What's your address there, pal? And right after that, I was like, oh, my God, this is real. And so they hired me. So at the age of 17, without any art training, except for a D minus in high school art, I got a job at Disney. Uh, so, like, so I can't really d- design a f- brand-new film like what so many people can, because I'm not really an artist. I just copy shapes. So, like, if if you want to design a new show, don't use me. But if you want something that looks like a, a bad, cheap copy of Robin Hood, then I'm your person. <laughs> um, so, Actually, 
<laughs> I was wondering actually, what uh, because I don't think we delved into it, this. Uh, what what were the movies you worked on? Uh, I, I started on Fox and the Hound um, because I sent three Fox characters, and they were about ready to lose the Don Beluth people to when they were going to leave to do their own studio. So so they were in a bind. So they saw me drawing some cartoon Fox, and I said I just graduated. They didn't know if it was college or not. I just, it was high school, and so and so they hired uh, me on, and so. I was working on every Disney film, but I left Disney to take a break during Rescuers Down Under to go to, go to, to as Warner Brothers. I came back for Hunchback of Notre Dame um, and then worked on all the films up to that until they shut down the department, uh, which was the uh, home in the range. Uh, hmm. So like I did the eels from Little Mermaid. Um, I did uh, some characters in Basil, Baker Street. I was in charge of. Uh, but I liked working on Basil a lot. He he was my favorite character to to uh, to work on. Um, I did Cookie and Whitmore on Atlantis, uh, Lucky Jack on Home in the Range. A very small stint on Mulan. I did that little dog, that uh, little brother. I think his name was. Um, I think what else I did on there. It it all becomes like a blur. In fact, like a few weeks ago or a couple months ago. Um, some students uttered like "together forever," and like that sounds familiar. Is that from like Star Wars? Like, no, that's a scene you animated. Stupid! And, like, <laughs> you don't remember already? <laughs> and like, oh. well, like what are you talking about? It was the eels. Like the eels. He, he said that. Like, yeah, the eels said "together forever." Like, are you sure? And then they show me. It's like, oh, I guess I did animate them. Oh, okay. So after a while, you you, you forget what scenes that, that you animate. You remember a film more if there's like some wacky stuff that's going on in production. Like like uh, on Mermaid, I remember doing all the gag scenes that Katzenberg got so angry at. Like uh, I got all these scenes. How do you all the Ariel sister scenes were in our sister Ariel and the clamshell opens up. I had Roger Rabbit in there. Had that had the robot from lots of space. Had a had some characters wearing pantyhose and f- f- fishnets, and then at the very end of the thing when Triton waves this giant Triton in the air, and it's supposed to be a rainbow. I said like, "Eat it, Joe's." And Katzenberg was sitting in the audience next to the directors, and the, the first gag scenes came, but with the, the, the aerial sister and her sister Airy and it's, uh, Swagger Rabbit, Katzenberg was apparently like, he just turned to uh, John Aaron like. <laughs> In the final film, is it? And John's like, oh, no, no, no. They had no You and got then, yelled at directly by the guy? <laughs> That's awesome. And so, and I so, cannot so, believe this. Oh, my so God. Then, right after that was like a scene where the, the, the sister's arrows, they're all like, eh, blah, 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 blah. And the robot from Lost in Space is like, kind of just going through the scene like, warning, warning. And Katzenberg's like, just like getting more mad, like, that's not going to be in the final film, is it? No, no, no. And then like, I had some other scenes I had like, characters with panties and fishnets, and Katzenberg's was like, there's a serious film, God damn it! And then, <laughs> and then at the very end of the film, when Triton goes, "Poof!" It says, "Eat it, Joe's." <laughs> and Cat, this muskrat was terrified that had any more gag scenes that he did not know about. But when he ate Joe's, he went like, "I'm dead! I'm dead!" <laughs> and Cat was like, <laughs> "So, uh, so then uh, that's when Musker came around like." I just had the scariest moment of my life. I was laughing inside, but I was terrified we were all going to be dead. Those scenes, I don't do them in. Like, oh, okay, I got a whole bunch more here that I was going to put in. Like, no, don't put them in there, whatever you do. But, but, um, when, but, but after that film, I was able to go back. Like when I was doing The Hunchback, I did all these scenes where I put like the Animaniacs in there. Um, oh, Atlantis was the funnest one because I was doing the scenes where Whitmore is talking to Milo. John Pomeroy was doing Milo, but he didn't get around to do, doing those scenes yet. So, so on, so the scenes are, are set up like my character is talking to Milo, but since Milo wasn't done yet, I put Beavis and Butthead in there. And I, oh, and so, <laughs> oh no. And oh, so, yeah, 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 yeah. 
and, and so I sampled all the dialogue from the cartoon, just getting lines that sound like appropriate responses, like, oh, cool. And I <laughs> emulated the same, like, like scratchy lines. Blah, 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 blah. And and did tell the directors about it and, and uh, put the uh, scenes into the server. And so when the screening hit, the entire place was busting, like, we got to put them in the film. Yeah, 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 yeah. So like, uh, so it was much easier when Casper left to do DreamWorks. It's much easier to do like fun gag scenes. Um, oh man! Like, like I, I got a little bit of that when we were working on Space Jam. It was the very beginning of the film. And I did that Lola Bunny film, and uh, and we had a big town hall Zoom meeting, like two hundred people, all these like it's like hundreds of Hollywood squares, all. Like, so they're like, here's some new layouts, blah, 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 blah. here's some new scenes and new voices, and you got anything to show? And so at the very end of the show, they're like, oh, so does anyone else have anything else to show? I'm like, I've got something. Like, oh, what did you do? Like, oh, I did this little short of Bugs of uh, Lola Bunny. It's not done yet. It's it's in production. So everyone's like, oh, it's going to be wild and goofy and fun if uh, Sean isn't doing Like, oh, yeah, it's going to be wild and goofy, all right. <laughs> and so, so we hit the play button, and their faces were like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> but, then, but then there's this one person's like, oh, we, we should be doing this. God damn it. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. This is real serious, like dark alien four. <laughs> fine, like, did, did you see the film during that one interview that, that, that I did? Uh, where it's like really dark and creepy. It was like just take Alien Four cloning, and the evil corporation was Warner Utani, and it was really like sinister and stuff. And L- Lola Bunny was the next um, iteration of of clones of, of the next design because there've been three designs now. Of Lola's the first, the TV show, and now the final film. And so the 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 uh, the, the theme of the cartoon was is. Um, uh, have you ever wondered what happens to the old versions of a character when the newer versions come out? And so when you get in there, she's the newest version that that is a uh, a cryotube, but then a uh, message uh, comes across the screen from the higher up saying, "We do not need any more versions up here. Terminate and incinerate all the newest uh, versions." And so she finds that because she's she has consciousness in the tube which they don't know about. So she bursts out. Because she, 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 she's like a clone that has never been still any memory, so she doesn't know what she is. And so she's fighting her way to get out of this sinister Warner Utani lab that we're going to find out later that isn't somewhere in the in the uh, uh, South Pole. So that it, it keeps all of their creations from trying to escape, but she escaped. Oh, I'm looking forward to seeing that. But yeah, so like if, if you want to see that, I can play that uh, so you can see what everyone's going like. What the fuck am I watching? <laughs> it's different. It's good. You, yeah. you mentioned that you got into Disney at 17. Mm-hmm. And that is practically unheard of nowadays. Um, going back to that, can you remember your first couple of days at work? Like, you know, what was your reaction to it? How was the environment, you know? Et cetera, et cetera. If you mind us, if you mind, oh. you know, telling us about that. Yeah, like I have never had a job. I just got out of high school, and my room was attached to Gail Oliver. Gail Oliver was the main assistant to Frank Thomas, who was one of the main animators there. And I said, like, so when does summer break here start? And look, summer break, boom. <laughs> 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 so like, I had no idea that employment. There is no such thing as a the summer break so i remember it was really hard sitting my butt down in a chair for eight hours a day in school you're like I, I was not a perfect student except for like algebra and all that i can just do the homework there and then pretend like oh yes i'm gonna do my homework but the instructor knew that i did it like but i didn't want to say i wanted more homework because or anything more I'm like yeah I'm like i'm gonna spend all night on this <laughs> but, but I, I was one of those guys I could do like like these big long math problems. Now I can't even do a simple divisionary problem. All that got erased for for, for having to draw like Robin Hood and stuff. So, oh man! Uh, but the early days were it was a lot of fun. All the kids there every single day was like college pranks. Every single day was a party. 
So the times were so much fun. The films weren't all that great. When Eisner started coming in, the fun times started going down. The films got better. And then now it's like, well, now you probably don't want to work there now uh, because of all you know, the, the brand new culture of the wokeism. You probably wouldn't get hired there. If uh, you're an old white guy, they won't even look at you. Oh, yeah. Uh-oh. So, yeah, yeah so, we, we know. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> uh, you, you probably won't even be able to get a job there now. But it's probably going to turn around because there's going to be a backlash and it's starting to hit now. So, but right now it's, it's, it's almost like, um, very, I don't, I, I don't want to use the term Nazi because like that's so overused, but it's like in, in Star Citizen, it, it's like, uh, uh, do not be seen trespassing. Stay in your room. You are to work. Now that you leave, you you follow the white line to get your car, and now you exit. And you got to show your your ID. It's not like this like fun place where you just drive in. I mean, like the last times I was at Disney, I would come in driving. I bought a used Dodge Viper, but I was wearing like these pants with like holes in it and the shirts like holes and stuff. Walking in there, they thought, "Are you homeless?" Like, no, I, I've been working here for like my entire life. Like, where's your ID? And, and so I show my own. All right, we'll be watching. No oh, man. So, so like if no, you don't look, yeah, if you don't look like you were it's no fun allowed now. <laughs> no fun yes. allowed whatsoever. Oh yeah. So like like now it's like everyone like the few people I know they're still like Chris Buck is still there. He's a uh, director. I think he's still there. A lot of them are being pushed out now. Like Chris Buck directed uh uh there's no princess film. Uh what's it called? Uh, Frozen. Uh, Frozen, yeah. He's one of the directors there, like you don't want to come back here now. It's like, so I don't know if he's still there or not now. Um, but I, I did get to visit them ooh, last year. Did Just, he direct the, the Frozen 2 too, as well? Uh-huh. Yeah, he directed it with, with a female director. And I think he's being put, pushed out for wokeism because he's a, a white male and he's old. So I, yeah. I, so I don't know if he's, he's, he's still there or not. But I think he'd be better if he was retired. Like he was asking me because like I would... I do these cartoons all the time. I'm having the time of my life doing these cartoons. Like you don't need it to be in a studio to to have fun and all that. Um, and so he started asking me, like, can you show me how me? Uh, can you show me how to do cartoons my own? Like, sure thing. I can show you real fast how to use Flash is the greatest tool for an animator because because <laughs> animating takes so long to do if you're doing it traditionally. But if you build a Flash model, you can. You don't have to worry about animating anymore. You just bang the footage out. You just tween. Between blah 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 blah. The hardest scenes is like when you do like full articulation, like when Athena's on the bridge and she's walking, she's like she's doing this. That that's hard enough. Like I was not about to to animate her legs. Like no, I have a deadline. I got to do like one <laughs> to five scenes a day. So like I just kept the, the shot from her. So she just basically just going up and down. Then I'm doing all the animation for head and the hair and all that. So scenes like that take a, like a uh, long time. So he's asking me how to do in cartoons because he wants to make films, but he feels like he's being forced into retirement now. And so like, so, hey, I'll help you out. And John Musker, who was uh, one of the directors there, he did Basil and uh, Hercules and... Uh, Atlantis? Uh, yeah, well, Atlantis, that, that, that was done by uh, Kirk and Gary. No, but Treasure I, Planet, Treasure Planet. Yeah. There we go. And so, yeah, and so, and so they're now asking me, well, how do you do this cartoon so fast? Like, easy, I can show you. And like a Gary Trisdale was talking to me on Zoom uh, a couple of months ago because he wants to do this stuff now. Um, because like he wants to be able to do his films for himself and, and for clients. And he was asking me about Flash. I said, well, if you want to do Flash, be prepared for when you're drawing in Flash, you'll be crashing about seven times a day. You have to know. To, you have to remember hit save all the time and um you have to recognize when flash is going to crash like fortunately the newest flash which crashes so much it'll it's a merciful crash every screen will go black hit save whatever you just hit save then quit out um it, you got to quit up otherwise it's going to corrupt your file and then you'll be in a world hurts like there's a couple of scenes that got blown away remember when that scene i think was about to ready to drink the the, the drink she's like thank yous and she it, well, that flash file, like I had the, I had the, the film output, but, but the flash file got all the animation is blown away. It's just her just standing there with the cups, like, oh, 
it did that again on me because it was one of those like crashes that you didn't want to happen and there's no way to recover it. And on this brand new one I just did, I saw that there's a scene that did the same thing. I, I, I got the animation out, but at some point, I have to decide, we don't like that scene and just blows it away. So like I'm telling you, if you want to do this, you might want to think about Toon Boom, even though it's kind of expensive. It's 2000 bucks to pick it up if you want to buy it outright. And then for your video editing, if you don't want to touch Adobe, uh, get uh, 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 DaVinci Resolve, I think it's called. Oh, yeah, that'd be good. Yeah, yeah, that one. Yeah, and you get to get that so you don't have to be paying. Because I'm having to pay like $70 a month to uh, sweat these things. It's like I'm getting kind of tired of that. So I figure I'll bite the big one and get Toon Boom and get this DaVinci Resolve. And I... I don't know if DaVinci can do the camera track, but I haven't done done that in a while because it's kind of a pain. Actually, um, tracking in DaVinci is insane. It's faster than real life playback. You just set a mask and it tracks perfectly with automatic points. It, it's like oh, it's okay. really good. <laughs> it's really like if you do these kind of scenes where you have character and it has to move accordingly with 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 objects in the scene, DaVinci oh. you just press Control T and it just like it, it's faster than playback. It's it's instant. Okay, yeah, because like I, I'm so computer illiterate. It takes me forever to learn. I have to like go to YouTube find tutorials like how to camera track or first you have to figure out what is it called and then finally like okay, <laughs> here's a tutorial. Okay, this guy's going one ear at the other. I find it going like okay, this one I kind of understand. This one I kind of understand. So I kind of like okay, but I can't perfect it because like I'm so computer and savvy. It looks like I know what I'm doing, but I really don't. And so like going to DaVinci Resolve like. I know I spend months trying to relearn that, but I'm getting tired of paying Adobe all this money. And Flash gets crashier and crashier for every iteration. They don't fix the most common problems. How old is that program? Uh, program uh, Flash, how uh, how long has it been there? Like, so like 10, well, 15 years, something like that? Maybe oh, more? Yeah, it's a lot older because like when the first Flash stuff I did was in 1999. It was for, it was for the furry fans dot com site that i did my little parting shot to the furries when when i left um but i was using more like an ink and paint thing because i didn't know how to make a puppet then and that was flash five and ever so like oh flash five is terrible you should get flash four or the one after it but since i just paid like 300 bucks for flash back then like oh i'm gonna make it work so all these years and they still haven't found a way to optimize it no it's like how is it that Blender handling 3D. I've never had Blender crash on I me mean, ever. I don't think I've. It never crashed. Uh, Flash though, it doesn't crash when you're doing like the puppet animation. But if you're drawing it, it's a countdown till till disaster. And sometimes the crash is so hard you have to hit that Control Alt Delete to get the task manager and you like shut down the uh, program. And hopefully you saved it because like it, whatever it is is going bye bye and. But yeah. it's a 2D program. So how could it, after 20 plus it's, years, you guys haven't nipped this in the bud yet, and you're charging people like exorbitant sums of money, and they wonder why studios dropped it to go to Toon Boom. It stands yeah. for your work can be gone in a flash. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, get out of oh, here. Oh, man. Get him yeah. out of here. <laughs> Celestia, well, like the, get him out of here. This is well, like, why we brought Alum to the thing. <laughs> oh, thank you. Well, like, well, like the nightmare stories, I, I was when I was on the Tom and Jerry show, when I was doing the assistant directing work, I, I, I'd be on the, the Teams chat thing, and I'd be talking, laughing. I'm like, But every now and then, scenes would come back corrupted. And I said, so when you're doing the Pony show, how much did you lose in Flash? Like, oh, it's untold. Like, there'd be times where when they update Flash, like there's this one bug, I forgot it was from... CS, it's like the 2000, I forget which iteration, and they did a brand new iteration. If you used any of those like uh, symbols like pound or the number key or something like that in a file, that caused a bug. So when another studio worked on a slightly older version of Flash, it started duplicating and duplicating and duplicating all, all the assets until it was so clogged. The, the, the scene couldn't be used anymore, and there's n no way to fix it either. And so they, they, they said they lost untold sequences. The animators had to redo stuff all over again. So 
like that same studio now now doing some of the stuff that uh, Renegade is now doing for Tom and Jerry. They, they went to them and said, like, we are done with Flash because we can't afford to have, like, lose millions of dollars because uh, Flash can't get their program right. Yeah, and I mean, the, like, all these stories about corrupted files are alien to me. Like, the, the worst thing I lost is, like, something in Photoshop once. Like, but everything, like, in, I don't know how many, like, six, seven years of... of of working with, <clears throat> with with programs, like the backup was like something that's already very functional and and, and like I never lost anything. So I, I cannot imagine like sending a, a work file and then it, because someone else uses a different program, it just wipes everything out, like especially yeah. for like teamwork. Yeah, it's terrible. Like um, a few years ago when I was working on the Tom and Jerry show, maybe before I had to do like a, a scene that just more fixed, I would just create, like, it's so bad if you hit create new, a new work file, as soon as your pen would hit the stylus, looked like Flash got shrunk down the taskbar. Oh, no, it just crashed. So anytime you're doing like a, like a big scene, create a brand new file, just do a scribble, save it, then reopen it. Because sometimes what Flash will do this really nasty thing, it, it corrupts the file from the very beginning. So you do save as, save as, save as, save as, then when you quit out of Flash, you try to open up, it's like, this this file is unreadable, and every iteration is dead. So, but just, I just think Blender. they fixed that. Splendor. Oh, Blender. it's horrible. Um, Join the dark side. 